I now want to turn your attention to Andrew McCarthy. I first met him in his backyard in Elk Grove, California in 2019. That's when his passion for stargazing really took off out of this world. Inspired by many of his father-son nights looking up at the sky through a telescope, Andrew McCarthy took photos of the universe and his photos took off. He's earned enough since then to uh, he's earned enough then selling his images that he actually uh, quit his job and does what he loves full time. He recently published one of the most detailed images yet of the moon that he's actually taken. Uh, this stunning high resolution image that we can see, uh, I'm going to pull that up on your screen, is actually a virtual image that we can see uh, and you can actually zoom into it here. Uh, and see just absolutely incredible, stunning images of the craters of the moon. You can see shelves, uh, just uh, fantastic images that you uh, often cannot see. And, and to think that someone uh, who started in his backyard was able to do this. I now want to go ahead and go straight into uh, Andrew McCarthy, who is here live with us uh, this afternoon here on the East Coast at 105. Uh, hey, Andrew, uh, how are you? Thanks so much for joining us. Okay, uh, so I want to uh, first kind of jump into it. Um, to tell me about the details in this image and really that process to create it. What did it take? Well, so uh, detail-wise, this image is pretty detailed. So the moon's about the size of the continental United States. And in this image, you can see things as small as about a quarter mile wide. So uh, as far as detail goes, it's crazy detailed. Um, to do that, I took about 280,000 individual photos using two telescopes uh, at about 7,000 millimeters of focal length. Um, and then I stitched them all together, almost like a quilt, to create this panorama of uh, the moon's surface. Uh, it was. It took me about two weeks to do this from start to finish, uh, and I think the result speaks for itself. Well, no doubt about that. You're taking a look at those images right now. Any features on the moon that are uh, most exciting to you? If you can point them out to, I can zoom in on them here. Oh, yeah. So all along the bottom of this image is called the Lunar Terminator. It's where the light meets dark on the moon. It's where shadows are the longest, so you can see the craters in enhanced relief. Um, a really notable one that right there in the middle of your screen is uh, Copernicus Crater. Very interesting part of the moon. A huge impact. This would have sterilized our planet if it had hit us while life was on it. Um, but you can see it right here, untouched since it first happened billions of years ago. Um, and you're really looking at a little piece of the universe's history right here on the lunar surface. It's a bit humbling to look at this. And that crater is about 60 miles wide, by the way, so you have a sense of scale. When you're looking up, up at the moon, I think from Earth, because so many, very few people have ever left this planet, let alone uh, gone to the moon, um, it looks, I think, much smaller than we kind of realize on Earth. Um, tell me about, though, you, you've taken so many different images, right? Uh, I'm going to pull some of those images up uh, right here. Here's some images there of your moon. Uh, thanks so much for sending those in to us, Andrew. Um, but why the moon specifically? Why so much focus and dedication on the moon itself? Well, here on Earth, which, by the way, I think is the most beautiful planet, we're very lucky to have it. Um, everywhere you look, you see incredible sights, but they're all very new in a cosmic sense. Uh, you, we have things like erosion. Uh, you know, we have uh, geological effects like uh, plate tectonics, uh, vegetation covering things. So you don't really get a look at the deep history of our planet. But we can do that on the moon. Really, just with like a cheap telescope or pair of binoculars, you can see the craters that have been there for billions of years. Um, and when you zoom in even closer on an image like Giga Moon, you can get really deep and you can see these uh, ancient lava tubes and cracks and mountains and cliffs. All these things have just been untouched and kind of still show how Earth would have looked in its infancy. That gives you such a unique perspective on just how blessed we are to have our own planet um, and it's really changed my own perception of the universe as well so it, it's a bit of an addiction to me at this point to continue to shoot the moon and strive for better and better images 
Well, the images that I see have been spectacular so far. I've been following you again for years, again, since we first met there in your backyard in Elk Grove. Uh, it's cr crazy to believe how time flies. Um, but we know that there's this exciting um, mission now also with Artemis, uh, sending folks to the moon. Um, and I understand that you've been involved somewhat as well uh, with the Artis Artemis mission. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, I take uh, very little credit for the Artemis mission. Uh, the one little piece that I had was if you looked in earlier photos of the rocket before it went to the moon, uh, hanging from the mobile launching platform was one of my images uh, behind the Artemis logo. So I was very lucky to have been a little small piece of uh, this historical mission, which is really exciting and I'm following very closely. Now, NASA is expected to send crews back to the moon later to build a permanent settlement there. And, you know, I would ask you if you're excited to be able to try to take pictures of the, the settlement, but my understanding is that it's not that easy. It's very much not that okay. easy. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, Giga Moon is my most detailed image of the moon I've ever done. And the smallest things I can see are quarter mile wide craters that just show up as little tiny specks. Um, so to see a settlement, it would have to be larger than that to capture it with my current equipment. In order to see something the size of the proposed settlement, I would need a telescope that's probably about the size of a football field. Uh, so unfortunately, no good images coming soon of anything man-made on the moon until we really start to take over and grow that settlement. Yeah, I imagine you would probably need a large-scale observatory, something incredibly massive uh, that would take a lot of dough to put together. Uh, but still, we're excited about that Artemis mission, excited about the idea of sending folks back to the moon, uh, perhaps by 2025. Um, what does this mission mean to you? And, and as someone who really loves space and looking up at the heavens, uh, how important is that? Uh, I grew up learning about the Apollo missions as part of history, and it was always a little sad that the vision of the space travel that we had in the 60s never came to fruition. Um, you know, a lot of people in the 60s and 70s thought we'd be on Mars and have permanent settlements in space by now. So seeing a little bit of that energy come back into this is really exciting, and it really stokes the imagination that I had as a kid reading about these things uh, in the history books, really. And of course, uh, anything gets more people looking up, I'm really excited about. And that's exactly what NASA is doing right now. For, sur for sure, absolutely. Um, you know, sending folks to the moon and uh, hopefully one day the plan is to get people on Mars. Andrew McCarthy, an astrophotographer, joining us now from Arizona. Andrew, uh, any closing thoughts? Well, if you want to zoom into Giga Moon yourself, you can see it on my website, cosmicbackground.io. I hope you get a chance to explore the moon and hope it inspires you as much as it inspires me. Andrew McCarthy, thanks so much. That astrophotographer uh, taking uh, a chat with us here on Live Now from Fox. We appreciate it, Andrew. Thank you so much.